this opportunity and greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, we will continue today with um, what the Lord has placed in our hearts, Barcelona. Um, well, and Jay, I think just to prepare whoever is listening, whether here with us or those who will be listening later to this message, um, that the Lord may help us uh, as we listen to this message, uh, that we listen for the heart of love that this message is coming from. Because when I speak today, there will be times when I speak as someone who is judgmental there will be times when i speak as someone who is out of touch with the realities of our society there will be times when i'll be speaking as someone who doesn't think very highly of what others think but if you just listen until the end and just hear the heart of the message you will understand that this message comes from a good place and it comes from a place of love as well. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's just um, a little bit of preparation. And I'm probably a little bit less worried about those of us who are here. But I'm more maybe worried about those who might be listening to us for the very first time. Those who might have never listened to other messages from our church. It might be uh, seen as, hey, Balthazar, uh, will it now? So, uh, just bear with me, Bazan. Amen. Amen. So, I'm just preparing you uh, to, you know, so people always say, fasten your seatbelts, and they say, buckle up. Uh, it's not that rough, but Bazan. It won't be that rough. You will see. Let us go, Bazan, to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, um, a verse that we all know, a verse that we all love, and we should love, Bazan. And I want us to read verse uh, 5 verse 8 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to verse 8 it says trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths do not be wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Let me read it again, Bazaran. I'll start again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Uh, so that we can continue. Amen. But as much as we, we enjoy this verse and we love it and we always encourage each other with this verse, <coughs> Um, I think sometimes, however, we don't realize the weight and the significance of what this word is telling us to do. You know what this verse is telling us? It's saying to us, verse 5, it says you must trust the Lord with what, Bazara? With your heart, Bazara. Now, trusting the Lord with your heart, remember, the heart is not... Uh, is not something that reasons. It's not something that has got the ability to, to have some intellect about it. The intellect is of the mind. We understand that. He says, love, he says, trust in the Lord with your heart. 
Now, we don't realize that there's a problem every time you have to, I have to trust him with my heart. You see, when you do things with the heart, uh, sometimes, you know, you know when, when, a, uh, when, when someone looks for something, you go to the shop and you go and you spend with your heart and you don't spend with your mind. Sometimes there's a problem, Nebazar. Whenever you are at this gate or more of Africa and you look at things with, your, with the eyes of your heart and then you start spending on the basis of your heart, that can lead to a very depleted bank account, Bazaar. You understand? Because the heart, generally when it, when it operates, it does not reason. It acts on the basis of what it feels. It acts on the basis of what feels good to it. Not necessarily on what makes sense. You know, you can look at these shoes, these stilettos, ma'am, and say, oh, these stilettos. My heart just feels that I need to get these stilettos. Your heart says, no, 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 no. You don't have money. This money is for transport. But your heart says, yeah, these stilettos I want. So every time you act with your heart, Every time you do things with your heart, there's a reasonable reality that you will do things that don't make sense. Do we agree with that, Pastor? Mm -hmm. Every time you are walking, and the Bible says, don't trust the Lord with your mind. Trust Him with your heart. Mm -hmm. Trust Him with your heart. You know, you've seen, you've seen this, even in marriage, you know. Um, you look at this lady, and you look at this very handsome gentleman. And this very handsome gentleman that you know says to you, no, this is my wife. And you look at this woman and you say, this is your wife. You know what I'm talking about, Bazaar? Or you don't know what I'm talking about? You get this very good looking man who is married to this not so good looking woman. And you know this good looking man and this good looking man introduces you to their wife. And you don't say, okay, this is your wife. You say, this is your wife. Even the way you ask the question means that you are doubting his choice. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then you forget to put it. this man was led by his heart. And he was not being led by reasoning or by what is. Because sometimes the heart can lead you to places of things that don't make sense. How could this man be married to this woman? I've seen it so many times. You know, when, when there's a, a, a young man or a young lady in church that, you know, this thing of announcing that this child, this couple are going to be married. You know, usually when you know the guy that's going to get married, he's a good looking guy. When the family walks in, usually there are three or four ladies. You start guessing. Yeah? But I wonder which one it is. And you look for the beautiful one. And when they stand up, you say, Ow. <laughs> John Maj. It's because, Bazalani, sometimes when the heart is at work, certain things of reason and logic go out of the window. Amen. And yet, this is what the Lord is saying to us. He's saying, trust me with all of your heart. And then he says, lean not on your own understanding. You see, it's like God knew that you have some understanding. He knew you do this thing that you, you understand. But he says, don't lean on that. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Basara. Mm -hmm. You see, God knew that there will be things in our lives that defy logic. That we just have to trust him for. Your logic tells you, no, but it can be. And God says, trust me. Yeah. Your logic says left, and God says right. Yeah. You see, but there are certain things you know you can't explain. You know, the Bible tells us, Guti, one day the, the Lord Jesus Christ will come in the clouds in all his glory. And he says, those of us who are the church will be caught up in an instant, in a, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed, and we shall be like him, and we shall meet him in the sky. Now, any one of us who has lived on earth knows that the law of gravity works. Mm -hmm. 
And the, the, the thing about what Jesus tells us, he says when he comes to get us, some people will be left. Now I can understand, Uti, you know, when you suspend gravity, like when you're in the moon, everything floats because the gravity there is low. Mm -hmm. But now, when some people, gravity still operates for them because they are being left behind, but the rest of us are going, there's no logic there for me. You know, as someone who has studied science, it doesn't make sense to me. How is it going to be possible that some people, for some people, gravity is still going to work, but for the rest of us, we're just going to float and meet Jesus in the sky? God knew that certain things won't make sense. And that is why he says to us, trust in the Lord. With what? With your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, Bazalwan. Now, when you read verse 7, Bazalwan, what does verse 7 say? It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Because when you've, got, when you've got knowledge, you think that you are wise. When you start to know certain things, especially those who've got the privilege of going to study and become educated, you start, you start to think that you are wise. And the Bible says, verse 7, do not be wise where? In your own eyes. Why does God say, do not be wise in your own eyes? Bazan, if you go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 1. There's a problem with knowledge, Bazan. There's a problem with knowledge. Don't close Proverbs chapter 3, because we're going to go back there. There's something that the Bible says about knowledge. What does it say about knowledge? It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. And knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. What does knowledge do? Tell us from the language of the Lord. My God, I know that You see, Bazana, knowledge, when we start to know things, we start to think we are wise in our own eyes. And the Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes, because knowledge puffs up, Bazana. You see, one of our biggest challenges, and because we live in this knowledge age, we know more now about the universe and the stars like we ever did before. We know more about biology than we ever knew before. We know more about nature, about seasons, about all these kinds of things more than ever before. And unfortunately, when we get this knowledge, we start to get puffed up and we start to think that we are wise in our own eyes. And the Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Remember, Bazar, when, when the Lord says to us, trust in the Lord, with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. When he says, do not be wise in your own eyes, where does this thing start? Go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Read verse 1 to verse 3 and see when he sets the scene, what he was talking about, why he was emphasizing that you don't lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 1 to 3. When he starts Baza in this chapter, he says, My son, do not forget my law. So this is the opening verse of this chapter. Do not forget the law. Do not forget the word of the Lord. That's the opening statement. But let your heart keep my commands. Do you hear the heart, Bazaar? Mm -hmm. The emphasis is on the law. The emphasis is on the commands. Do you hear that, Bazaar? 
That's where the emphasis is. If you for the length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you, but bind them around your neck. Write on them. Write on the tablet of your heart. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Do you hear the heart of the Lord in this verse? He is saying, let not mercy and truth forsake you. So what he's saying, he's saying mercy and truth. Let them not leave you behind. Let them always be part of your life. Instead, he said, put them around your neck. What does it mean? They are always with you. You see, when you left Mama Tunja with that necklace at home, when you put it on, when you left home, it did not stay behind. It is here with you because... So he's emphasizing that mercy and truth. But the question is, what truth are we talking about? What truth? Because the emphasis on verse 3 is on truth and mercy. But whose truth and what truth are we talking about? And now I want to start with my sermon, Bazalai. And I've entitled this sermon, Whose Truth is the Truth? Hallelujah, Bazalai. Whose truth? Whose truth is the truth? There is this thing, Bazalwane, that you hear these days, a very popular thing. In fact, there's a movement, a very strong movement that is growing, and it's called the My Truth Movement. I don't know if you've heard uh, that there's such a movement called the My Truth Movement. Now, I want to start off by saying this, Bazalwane, and this is key to everything else I'm going to say. And I want us to see whether we agree with one another before we move on, because this is important, Bazalwane. I come and I make a statement and I'm standing on the statement that says two opposing statements can be both true at the same time. Do we agree with that sentiment? Two opposing statements can be true at the same time. Do we all agree with that or do we disagree? And if you, if you disagree with me, give me an example where you have two opposing statements that are both true at the same time. Does such a thing exist, Vazala? No. It is not possible that two opposing statements can both be true at the same time. So one is the truth and one is not the truth or it's a lie. Hallelujah, Vazala. So when something is not the truth, what is it? It is a lie, Vazala. So let us just establish that truth. There are no two opposing statements that can be both true at the same time. Now in the midst of that, you've got a movement. This is my truth movement. And you hear it, Bazaar. People are saying everywhere. Uh, and I remember there was a big argument a few years back. Uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey was giving a speech. And I, I didn't listen to that speech, but it went something like, you know, be, uh, something like the most important story to tell is your truth. I think she, she, she said something like that. And people are on about this thing of my truth. You know, this is my truth. This is my reality. And you even see this Bazaar in all areas of life. When you go into marriage these days, people are saying we are going to conduct our marriage in our own truth. We are not going to listen to what the word of God says. We are going to do this thing in our own way, in our own truth. But uh, this concept, uh, you know, people tell you, we don't subscribe to this thing of submission. This thing of submission, it's backward. It's archaic. It's not for us. We will believe in the current truth that says a man and woman shall be equal in marriage. This is our truth. This is my truth. And you and remember, when people are saying it's my truth, they are saying, they're effectively saying, you can't argue with me because this is my truth. Yeah. <clears throat> you can't dispute this because it's my truth. Yeah. You've got your own truth and I've got my own truth. And I'm standing here saying, 
two opposing statements can both be true at the same time. So one of us is right and the other is wrong. You see, what these people fail to realize, when you say this submission thing doesn't work, you know what I always say to people? When I, when I speak to young women, I say to them, you know, when you're about to marry someone, you better make sure that whoever you are marrying submits to someone. Because it is a dangerous thing to marry a man who's not submitted to some other authority. Hallelujah. There is no more dangerous man than a man who fears no, no other authority. If you marry a man who fears no authority, that is the worst kind of marriage that you can expose yourself to. So when you say you don't believe in this thing when of submission, that man must be submitted somewhere himself. Mm. And when God says you must submit to him, God is not confused. God is not mad when he says there must be submission in a marriage. You might think he's mad. He's not mad. God knows exactly why he says these things must be done the way that he says they must be done. But I pity you if you say, I'm living my own truth. No one will submit in this marriage. You will see fire. Yeah. You will see fire when you marry a man who is not submitted to an authority that is above him. A man who does not fear anything is the most dangerous man. Those are the kind of men that hit their wives with their fists because they fear no one. But a man who submitted to authority knows, I can't mess with God's daughter. I can't touch God's daughter because he's submitted somewhere. So when you say you don't want submission in your marriage, you don't know what you're saying. You don't understand because Bazan knowledge puffs up. You think you are wise. You think you know better than the Lord. And yet the Lord said to us, trust in me with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. The understanding says, no, 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 man. Let this thing be 50-50. Yeah. There's no 50-50 here. It's 100-100. You all bring 100% commitment to this thing the way the Lord says you must commit. And the Lord says the husband is subject to Christ and the wife must be subject to the husband. It's not popular. And people are saying, no, I mean, I'm living in my truth. This is our, we are okay the way. Do you know we are okay? Don't, don't impose those biblical principles on us. That's what people are saying. Don't impose them. This is our truth. We are at peace. We understand each other. That's what they say. We understand each other. I'm saying knowledge. Puffs up, Bazalan. It's in marriage, Bazalan. It's in how people raise their children. You can't tell people how to raise their children. You can't quote the book of the Lord and tell people how to raise their children. You are interfering. You are judgmental. You are judging us. You know, people have got these living in arrangements where they say, no, we want to live together first and just see whether we are compatible. And when you tell them that that is not scriptural, that is not what the Lord says, no, stop judging us. This is our truth. <laughs> it's your truth. <laughs> then God's truth must be a lie, according to you. Because no opposing statements can both be true at the same time. Bazana, this is my truth movement. You know what they are saying to us? They are saying none, no one has the right to impose their beliefs on another. That's what they are saying, Nebazan. Mm -hmm. They are saying no one has the right to impose their beliefs on another. Now, what they fail to realize is that this very thing of saying everyone has a right to live their own way, that in itself is a belief. And they are forcing us to adopt that belief. Amen. Are you hearing me, Bazan? That thing that says... No, everyone must live according to what they believe. That in itself is a belief. And they want to convince us that we must live according to that way. And yet they are saying, don't impose your beliefs on us. You know, they don't realize that this knowledge that they think is wisdom is actually foolishness. But 
you hear the love behind the message. I said I'm going to sound as if I'm harsh, I'm judgmental. But he, you must hear the love behind what I'm saying. People have a problem when we tell them same-sex marriages are not right in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Have you ever said? Amen. They say, no, 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 no. You are being judgmental. You don't know what I feel. I was born this way. They even have the audacity to say God created me this way. They've got the boldness to say God made me this way. What a danger, Basalwani. And, and, and I want to show you, you know, wherever you are, before you get too angry with me, wherever you are listening, just hear Hallelujah. what I'm about to say. Yeah. Because I'm telling you what I'm saying comes from not a point of judgment, of being judgmental. It comes from a point of love because I'm saying it doesn't help for us to say your truth and my truth. There is nothing like my truth and your truth. There is only one truth. Because we can't both be right and both be true. One of us is in the truth and one of us is in the lie. And if, I'm in, if, I'm, if I think I'm in the truth and I'm in the Lord show me, even me, even I myself as I'm talking here, if I'm wrong and I think I'm in the truth, let the Lord enlighten me so I can move to a position of truth. Because I don't want to be deceived, Bazaar. I've explained to you what deception is. Eh? Amen. What is deception? Deception is believing a lie to be true. That is a simple definition of what deception is. You believe that a lie is true. That is why these people are saying it's my truth. It's because they are deceived to believing that a lie from the devil is the truth. Bazaar. Hallelujah. Let me try and explain this further, Bazarwana, um, and why, you know, this thing is so important. This movement that says, you know, I'm, this is my truth, I'm living in my truth, uh, is so dangerous because it has become a common phrase. When young people talk, you know, even when they say, when they are sharing, they are saying, please share your truth with us, as if his truth is different to mine. Um, and it becomes a popular phrase. And the reason why we've got to, as a church, we've got to stand against this. There's someone who coined a phrase which says, uh, words create worlds. Can I repeat that again? <clears throat> words create worlds. Worlds. W-O-R-L-D. So words create worlds. Uh, to be more accurate, Words create world views. The more something is being said, it creates a picture, it creates a belief, it creates actions eventually. People act on the basis of those things. You know, people believe in their truth. People believe they can conduct their lives anyhow. But let's look at scripture and look at some of the dangers of creating or believing in your truth. You see this movement, is based on people's belief that are based so it's based on uh, beliefs that are based on people's feelings Amen. it's based on people's <clears throat> feelings now when you go to the book of Acts chapter 16 I want us to read this passage Acts chapter 16 verse 25 to verse 28 Acts 16 verse 25 to verse 28. Are we still together, Bazaar? Yes. Are we still awake, Bazaar? Yes. Am I still making sense, Bazaar? Yes. You must tell me what hey, Fundis has says, man. Tell me. Because this message in my spirit is that important, Bazaar. You know, it's said how many people have lost a lot by believing that what they believed was true. Mm. So many people have lost so much. Believing. You know, there are people today, they are in hell, as well. mm. they generally believe to go to what they were walking in was the truth. And they are angry, they are sad that we were deceived. We thought, you know, just like Paul, you know what Paul says? Paul says, you know, when I persecuted the church, I was deceived. I genuinely thought what I was doing was right. Mm. And I know, I know wherever you are, I'm going to say, 
whatever it is that you believe is truth, you generally believe that that's the truth. Otherwise, you would not be acting and doing the things that you are doing. But I'm saying how many people have lost their lives, have lost so much because they believe something was a truth when it was indeed a lie. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to verse 28. What does the word say, Basel? Amen. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So Paul and Silas have been arrested. It's just after they cast out a demon from that lady who was prophesying, uh, those whose masters were getting money from her. Yeah. So they cast out the demon from her, and these guys had them taken into prison. So Paul is in prison with Silas, and he's sitting with other prisoners, and they are singing at night, and the Bible says the other prisoners were listening to them. These guys had been flogged, Paul and Silas, but at night, they start singing to the Lord Bazaar. And it says, verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors, Bazaar, not just the doors where Paul and Silas were, all of the doors were open. Hallelujah, Bazaar. Mm -hmm. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. I want to emphasize not just Paul and Silas's door or chains, but even the other prisoners' doors and chains were all loosed. Bazaar. Are you with me, Bazaar? Amen. Verse 27. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Amen. Remember, Zan, I started this thing saying, how many people have killed themselves believing that whatever it is that they were believing was the truth? I want you to look at this jailer. This jailer, he hears the earthquake. And when he wakes up, he sees that all the prison doors are open. And when he sees that the prison doors are opened, he, he, be, he starts to believe that all of the prisoners have escaped. Bazala. And then he throws out his sword. Remember, Bazala, as a jailer, you are responsible for the people that were in custody. If they escaped, your life had to be taken. So he knew that if these guys had escaped, I might as well, I might as well kill myself. Because the way these guys are going to kill me, they might even torture me. I might as well just take my life now. Never said that. But I want you to see something, Bazaar. This man is about to kill himself for something that he believes has happened, and yet it has not happened. Are you with me, Bazaar? Yeah. How many people kill themselves in life over things they believe have happened? They believe that it is over when it is not yet over. How many people take decisions on the basis of what they believe and take actions which, are, which will transform their lives forever, believing that is true when in fact it was not the truth? This man was ready to kill himself believing something that was a lie. And this is what happens to people every day. Every day, they believe that it is the truth. And they are ready to go to the depths 
of whatever truth they believe when that truth is in fact a lie. Hallelujah, Bazaran. Here's a man who has a... And Bazaran, read verse 27. Why did he believe what he believed? What was his logic? What does verse 27 say? What made the jailer believe that the prisoners had escaped, Baza? Mm -hmm. He saw something. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Baza. He saw something. And on the basis of what he saw, he believed. Hallelujah, Baza. Mm -hmm. And what he saw was part of the picture. It was not the full picture. Mm -hmm. Now, just like us, we make decisions on the basis of the partial picture, on the basis of this limited knowledge that we have found. And we want to make decisions about the Lord and about creation and about our destiny on the basis of limited knowledge, of things that are limited that we have seen, not having the full picture that the Lord, the Creator, has of everything that is happening around. Sometimes the Lord says to you, do something that, has, that is illogical to you, but he says, trust in me with all of your heart. Hallelujah, Bazaar. He saw something. You know, Bazaar, this is the same reason that makes the young man want to have premarital sex. You know, because you know what he says? He sees that his body is ready. He sees that he's got the feelings for this thing. And he sees that he's got the ability to enter into this thing. And therefore he concludes, if I've got the feeling, if I've got the ability, if I've been given the ability to do this thing and I feel this way, then God must want me to partake of this thing. That is the logic which is far from the truth, Bazaar. But there are many things that the Lord has given us ability of. Things that we feel, but that we are not supposed to do. You know that each and every one of us here, we have the ability to lie. Is that not true, Baza? Inside each and every one of us here, you have been given the ability to lie if you so wanted. Now, if you feel like lying, and you've got this ability to lie. Does it mean you must lie? Why must this logic apply in certain instances and not apply in other instances? If I feel, Barcelona, if I feel, I feel, I feel, I've got feelings for what And they are genuine. And I say to you, you don't know my truth. My truth is that I've got feelings for Bob Malina. And they are so strong. There is no way the Lord would have given me these strong feelings for Bob Malina if God did not want me to lay with Bob Malina. That's the logic, Bazaar, of the world. Now let's take it forward. I've got a yearning. There's a lady there next door. Very beautiful lady, opposite. Ne? I'm just making an example. I don't know who stays there. My wife, in case you're wondering. I don't know <laughs> who stays that side. Opposite there, there's a beautiful lady that stays there. My body says, I want her. I want that woman. And I go and I speak to her. The feelings are there, but they are real. They are real. Ne? Hypothetically, by the way, ne? just to clarify. Ne? I don't have feelings for, for my neighbor's wife. The, the feelings are there. They are real. I'm burning with passion inside of me for my neighbor's wife. And I've got power. And I speak to her. I say, man, come on, let's do this thing. Abdul won't know. You know? Abdul won't know. Because my, most of, some of my neighbors are Muslim. So maybe it's, it's the guy's name is Abdul. <laughs> Abdul won't know. Man. Come on, let's do this thing. And she says, you know, no, I'm not doing this thing. 
Now, Bazaran, I've got the feelings, they are real. And I've got the power and the ability to subdue her. I can force myself upon her. Now, the fact that I've got the feelings, the fact that I've got the power, the fact that I've got the ability, does it mean that it is right for me to do that thing? The power, the feeling, the ability does not give you the right to, because it is wrong, no matter what you feel. You see, this is where Bazane, trusting the Lord with all your heart comes in. Why do I have these feelings, Lord, even though you say, you're saying this thing is wrong? Trust me as the Lord when I say this is wrong. I've got the bigger picture that you don't have. Trust me when I say this thing will lead you to death. This is the kind of thing that we need to be aware of, Bazaar. Sometimes we lead ourselves in a path that leads us into death because we believe it's the truth when it is indeed a lie, Bazaar. Something happened in the natural that made him believe this jailer, but it was not the truth, Bazaar. Hallelujah. Amen. Imagine, Bazaar, if all of us did everything we felt like doing, what kind of world would we live in? If every man just lived in accordance to everything they felt. You see what King David did with the wife of Uriah? It was just exactly that. Doing anything I feel like doing. Even when they tell him, I go, this is another man's wife. Bring her to me. If all of us lived like that, what kind of a world would it be, Basar? I'm asking the question this morning. So whose truth is the truth? Hallelujah, Basara. Whose truth is the truth? All of us, at some point, at some stage, we're all going to have to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. <clears throat> Lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge Him. You see, Basara, it's like God knew. He knew that when I placed my, my creation here on earth, they won't all be right. That is why, Bazani, in creation, in the beginning, the first thing that God did, he gave them commandments. The first thing, when he placed him on earth, he says to Adam, you must tend and keep this garden. That's a command. That's the first thing you must do. The second thing he says to him, he says you must leave your mother and father and you must cleave to this wife. It's a commandment. The third thing he says to them, he says, out of every tree of this garden you may eat, but out of the tree of knowledge of evil, of good and evil, you shall not eat. That is a command, Basar. God knew that we needed a framework of where we must define what the truth is. Because if all of us go around deciding what the truth is, then what is the truth? <laughs> if your truth is the truth and my truth is the truth, then what is the truth? Then there's no truth. Hallelujah, Basara. God knew Basara. And in all of this, Jesus says something, Basara, that is so key, that is so fundamental. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. It's a verse that we all know, Basara. What does it say? John, chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus says about himself that he is something. Basalon, I'm hoping that you will start to understand this verse a little bit better going forward. Because there are many supposed truths out there. Many supposed ways out there. And Jesus says something which is so important for the church to acknowledge. He says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I want, you to, I want to ask this question. Mr. Mufold, when, when Jesus says, I am the truth, what does it say about anything else that is out there? When Jesus makes that bold statement to say, I am the truth, 
then everything else that is out there is what does that? It's a lie. We have not understood how serious what Jesus is saying is. He is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he emphasizes it by, emphasizes it by saying, to show you that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, I mean no one, can come to the Father except through me. In other words, what he's saying, every other way of trying to get to the Father is what? Is a lie. Listen to me. I said to me, I'm going to sound as if I'm judgmental. I'm going, but I'm, what this is saying, if you believe in anything else except Jesus, you are believing a lie. Amen. Because Jesus is the truth. Anything else you believe, I will show you, you you have been deceived. If, you know, some people believe the only way to get to God is through works, is through sacrifices. People are making blood sacrifices left, right, and center, trying to get to God. I don't know how many chicken, I don't know how many bulls are being slaughtered somewhere in the world, trying to get close to God. And Jesus is saying, I go. I am the only way, I am the only truth, and I am the only life. Anyone who's doing anything else, according to this verse, it's a lie. Hi, dear Basana. Why is it important, Basana? Why is what Jesus is saying important? Remember what I said. Two opposing statements can't both be true at the same time. So if someone says the way to eternal life is this way, and another says, no, the way to eternal life is this way, we can't both be correct. Have you ever said? Because there's only one truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Everything else is a lie. And you see, this is important, and I keep on emphasizing this. When we say, through all these religions, no, all of us are praying to one God. All of us are. Because that's what people say. Mm. You know, I was, even when uh, we went somewhere looking for a venue for fellowship, when, um, the, you know, the, the lady that was there, the admin, the admin lady, was asking us, um, uh, are, you a, are you a Christian church? But, but he, the way she asked was, you know? And the guy who was there was saying, Ah, but what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say other churches are not ours alone. Because there's this perception, with it, as long as all of us are believing in, in a God, then all of us know the way that leads to eternal life. And yet the Bible says, wide and easy is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow and difficult is the way that leads to eternal life. There are no many ways, Vazalan, to the Lord. There's one way. It's narrow. And that way is Jesus Christ. And we need to tell the world this truth because we love them. We need to tell the world this truth because, unfortunately, God has chosen in his sovereignty that the only way to him is through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, yet there's a verse that saved me, Vazalan. The verse that convicted me. The verse that made me become a Christian. Because I was one of those who are saying, no, we're all serving the same God. All of us. Don't come and tell me your God is better than my God. I'm believing. I'm also believing in the creator of the heavens and the earth. And as I've always said, how is it possible that the God that you believe says you must sacrifice your baby in a fire? Your, your newborn child sacrifice him, cut their guts and spill their blood in this fire and make a sacrifice. How can that God be the same God as the one that I serve? The God that I serve says I must not murder. I must not kill. So how can we be serving the same God? It is a lie. There's only one God, one creator, not many creators. And this verse convicted me, Bazan, because as I was saying, I was believing with no man. All of us, all these different nations, we all believe in some God. 
And I remember uh, my spiritual father, Om Kol, as he was reading this verse, he said, he particularly pointed to me because he knew what my challenges were before I was saved. He said, I'm referring specifically to you. So whoever you are, wherever you are, when you are listening to this, this verse is also for you. Because most of us believe we are in the truth when in fact we are in a lie. Those feelings that you feel don't mean that you must act the way you feel. It's not a license. It does not mean that God created you that way and therefore that's how you must act. All of us have got feelings that we must subdue. All of us. The, the Paul says, I beat my body and I bring it into subject. Why does he need to beat his body? Because his body wants to do certain things that he knows that are not in line with the word of God. Whose truth is the truth, Basara? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. This is the verse I'm reading to all of us, wherever you are listening. I hope the Spirit of the Lord, you know, just makes this word become a reality to you as it was a reality to me one day when this, when this word was read in church. It says of the Lord Bazaar, it says God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. <clears throat> now Bazaar, chapter, chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. It says God, who at various times, so many times before, and in various ways. Do you understand that, Bazaar? At various times and in various ways. God did what? He spoke in the past. He spoke to our fathers, Bazaar. In various ways, in many times, through the prophets. Hallelujah, Bazaar. Yeah. So God was always speaking to men. Wherever they may have been. God has always been speaking to men. And he was using various ways and various means at various times. Hallelujah. He was reaching out to all the nations, all of them. He was always speaking to men. Amen, Bazar. Literally, when you when you continue, let me read verse one again and continue to verse two. It says, God, who has at various times, in various ways, Bazar, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. So I believe, Bazar, even the nations who are not the, the nation of Israel, God was still talking to some men there. God was still talking to his people there, who were in various times, in various ways. God was speaking and saying to them, there is a God somewhere. That is why I always mention this. All the nations, they believe somewhere that there is a God. It's because God was speaking to them in various ways, at various times, through our fathers. Hallelujah, Basara. Litige has in these last days, God has chosen that in these last days, he is speaking to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the words. So in the past, he has spoken in various ways and at various times. But now in the last days, what has he chosen? He has chosen to use his son as a vessel for communicating. So he's the one now. In the time past, yes, he spoke to men in different ways. But right now, the truth is Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now, nothing else matters except Jesus. Bazaar. And the, the Bible says, it emphasizes that whom God has appointed an heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So this person, that is the truth, is not just the son of God. But he's the one whom through God made the words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, this very son, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name 
than they. Bazalan, it doesn't matter what we think. What the Lord is saying to us, He's saying, in the past I've chosen to use other means. But right now, I've chosen to make Christ my chosen vessel. That is why when Christ says, no man can come to the Father through me, it's through God's choice. That is what God has chosen. Now, whose truth is the truth? You must choose what you believe. Bazalane, any man who can stand and say to you, I don't believe that there is a God. You see, you would have to say that you don't believe there is a God. You have to have some knowledge about the world before it existed, during its existence, and where it's going to end. And none of us have got that knowledge and understanding of saying we know what happened before, we know what's happening now, and therefore that's why we have to believe there's a God. And I'm saying His truth is the only truth. And sometimes His truth will conflict with your logic. Sometimes his truth will not sit well with you. But guess what? The word has told us today. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So I'm appealing to you wherever you are, Mdanasekai. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on what you are feeling inside of you. Don't lean on feelings. Feelings are deceptive. One day they are high, one day they are low. Lean on the everlasting word that is able to change you and transform your life. The only way to salvation in these last days is Christ Jesus. And it's so simple, wherever you are, wherever you are listening. You know, Bazalwan, you know, and this is why, why my heart, my heart becomes so. You know, people are trying to find the truth outside of God. Can you imagine that? You want to try and find your truth outside of God. Outside of God, there is no truth. Hallelujah. Anything you will find there outside of God is a lie. Amen. And the devil will paint it and he will give you intellectual reasons why this thing makes sense. I remember Bazalwan and me. You know, when I was about to convert to Islam, it made so much sense. It made so much sense to me. It was the most intellectually stimulating religion there was, and it made sense to me as a black man. And when I became a Christian, it was, I did not understand, but I was convicted. Look at those differences, Bazaar. When I became a Christian, I did not understand. I was just convicted that this is the truth. I did not lean on my own understanding. I trusted in the Lord. And guess what? The only truth is found. So if you are trying to find the truth anywhere else, except in the Lord, you are exposing yourself to lies. You know, we speak to people left, right, and center. You know, they are trying to find things. They are trying to find things. Give us a chance to find things. As long as you are trying to find yourself outside the Lord, you will find something. You will find something. The Bible says, seek and you will find. It's a guarantee you will find. But that which you find will not be the truth. I guarantee you, as long as you are trying to find the truth outside of God, you will find lies and you will be deceived. But I want to say to you, wherever you are, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, the, the Bible says it's the only way, yes. the truth and the life. And the only way to accept him, you might not understand it. It might not make sense to you. But the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Trust him with your heart. It says, what does the Bible say? It says the only thing you need to do is to believe. It says, confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe that the Lord raised him from the dead. It says for it is with the heart that we believe and with the mouth that confession is made. So if you are there and you want to accept Jesus Christ, you may not understand because, you know, we're saying lean not on your own understanding.
but something in you is yearning for the truth. Come over to this side of the truth. Amen. Come over to this side where there's only the truth. Because anything out there, Barcelona, that is not Jesus, is a lie. Amen. Because no opposing statements can both be true at the same time. So if you are there, I want to pray with you. And I want us to Amen. all come together in prayer. I want you to say this thing after me. So that whoever is watching, so that whoever is listening, can be ushered into salvation, Mazala. Hallelujah. So I want us to close our eyes and I want us to lift our hands as we pray for whoever is listening who's saying I'm making a decision to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today because I know and I've learned to go today is there are no two truths. There's only one truth. And that truth we have seen is Christ Jesus resurrected who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And therefore I want you to say after me, Lord God, Lord God, I submit my life to you. I believe that Jesus Christ came down on earth. He lived and he died. And you raised him up from the dead. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father in majesty. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Is my Lord. I, submit I submit myself to you. Everything of mine, Everything of mine. I, give I give to you. Make me a new creation. Me a new creation. All, things All things have passed away. Have passed away. Behold, Behold, new things are coming to pass. Are coming to pass. Cleanse, me Cleanse me with your blood. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. And usher me into your eternal salvation. I give my life over to you. I know that salvation is only through faith and not through works. Work in me, my Father, to be a faithful servant of the kingdom. As I give my life to you, be glorified from now forevermore. I will no longer live according to my feelings but I will live according to the truth that is found in your word in the name of Jesus Christ of my Lord, my Lord and Savior Amen Let us just give the Lord a round of applause for the grace of Jesus Christ Hallelujah Father we thank you, we honor and we bless you for this word for revealing your truth unto us, for not mincing your words and telling us that you are the only way, the truth and the life. We accept that truth. We may not understand it, but you have told us we must trust in you with all of our hearts and lean not in our own understanding. Thank you for speaking to your church in this way. Thank you for speaking to whoever was listening. Father, we sing, let the love of God, let the love of God overflow unto each and everyone who is listening to this message. Our hope is that your love may minister to them because we all want to be ushered into eternal salvation. We don't want even one person who is listening to this message to be deceived by the devil, but we want through the love that is in us that we may all be ushered into salvation and glory and to rule and reign with you forever. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we ask for your blessing, goodness and mercy upon each and every person who is here and who is listening to this message. Let your favor, goodness, and mercy be upon each and everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.